I was uh, fascinated with the intellectual capability of the young people that I uh, worked with and uh, lectured to in the law schools. I was at five of the top ten law schools. Uh, lectured in English. Uh, you know, there are more English speakers in China than there are in the United States. And if I were involved in your company, I would take note of the fact that all those English speakers and uh, they're interested in the rule of law and how our system of common law works. I would try to figure out a way to get some access to those inquiring minds to uh, uh, those issues. Because I was talking about the rule of law, uh, the U.S. form of government, federalism, talked a little bit about intellectual property law. And I had considerable amount of freedom to talk about those issues uh, once the approval was gotten that I could speak at the forums I did. And I was informed that oftentimes it took three to four to five levels of approval to speak. But I found there was a real curiosity about the uh, American system, uh, English system, Canadian system uh, of law, and the rule of law. And I, and I think what's driving that is that China understands that it's now a major player on the world economic market. Uh, there are all these types of agreements and trade, and for them to uh, be able to function well is that they will have to have some semblance of the rule of law in the economic sphere. Now, the danger for China with respect to that is that if you bring in the rule of law in the economic sphere, do you have the camel's nose under the tent, and how does that have uh, collateral consequences for uh, political freedom and criticism of the government? And so it's a... Uh, a very uh, uh, complex, uh, almost bipolar type situation in the government in that they uh, want to have the rule of law so they can continue the development of the uh, uh, economic sphere. They understand that there's some restrictions, some things that have come in after Tenement Square and to continue to expand. Uh, they need the rule of law, but they're also, I think, very worried about to what extent it might unleash uh, aspects of Chinese history and culture. If it comes too fast and too soon, how will the country adjust and will the uh, structure of uh, uh, the government and stability? There's a real concern about stability. And when we talk about China, is that you cannot forget the two other giants that are at play in the, in the uh, Far East, India, and to another extent, Japan. And both are economies that are expanding. They're using different models. And uh, the Chinese people are very aware of what's happening in India, even aware of what's happening in uh, even autocratic countries as Miramar and, and in the uh, area down in Thailand, whatever. So it's, it's a dynamic and complex area, difficult to understand. But I did come away with the impression that there is great curiosity about what we do as Americans, great, great curiosity about the rule of law and how it works and how our, uh, our, our government functions.